very nice Lister. Here we celebrate pop culture and overall talented young people. Sedu is a beautiful textile that can be revitalized and used in our day-to-day -day life. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Laila Humaira. On this episode, we're looking back at some of the most colorful and interesting moments of 2023, showcasing the country's diverse traditions and culture, including falconry, pearl diving, and sadhu weaving. We also went behind the scenes with a special Indonesian ensemble and met some anime geeks. But first, in the pursuit of finding comfort food and fine dining, here's how Adil Halim and I ate our way through Qatar. Yihua first opened its doors in Qatar in 1998, years before the Korean cultural wave. Today, Sung Moon is continuing what his parents started, opening two more branches and spreading the love for Korean barbecue. For someone who's never experienced it before, what makes up Korean barbecue actually and what makes it a truly interactive dining experience? Korean barbecue is different in the sense that everyone around the table is involved. Our meat is thinly sliced so that it cooks easily and at your own pace. We also offer a different variety of side dishes that complement your meat in a lettuce wrap. It's a sound that would entice any meat lover, and the smell makes it irresistible to taste. And once you've taken a bite, it will leave you wanting more. Whether you're new to Doha or just trying to find a new food joint, what better way to expand your taste buds than through a food tour? Adil went on one such tour with renowned food blogger Rachel Morris, exploring three cuisines under one roof. We now come to the vibrant Bin Mood area to try not one, two, but three different Asian cuisines. Thai, Burmese, and Vietnamese. Let's dig in, Rachel. Let's get into it. I've never tried Burmese food proper, and I'm a convert, I've got to say. One of my favorite dishes on their menu is what's called a Burmese spaghetti, and it's like, really hits all my notes. It's like sweet, savory, crunchy, it's got pickles in it, it's very cool. The Burmese is new here. People get excited to have to try the new things in Doha. Tuk Tuk Saigon opened its doors during the World Cup. With football fans from all over the globe descending upon Qatar, food offerings also became significantly more international. While Qatar has rapidly evolved into a metropolitan country with an impressive skyline and world-class infrastructure, it stands proud of its Arab culture and rooted to keeping its traditions alive. We took to the skies with some agile falcons and met the woman passing on an ancient art. And to learn more about Qatar's pearling past, Charlotte Dubinsky jumped on a boat and ventured into the country's turquoise waters. You don't have to dive deep into Qatar's past to know that these waters have always been abundant with riches. Today it's oil and gas, but for centuries wealth came from oysters on the seabed. Mohammed is one of the few divers who's still seeking his fortune at the bottom of the ocean. It's very nice, Lister. An incredible haul for Mohammed because natural pearls are incredibly difficult to find. Those smaller beads are perhaps more common, but to find an oyster with a large natural pearl inside, it's more like one in every 10,000. That gives you a sense, an idea, as to why they're so expensive and for many, so desirable. But for Mohammed, this isn't about making a wage. Natural pearl diving is a calling, a link to his past. This is part of us. This is our culture. That's what our grandfather was doing for a living. From one ancient skill to another, the art of sadhu weaving is becoming increasingly rare. 
but I met two women from different generations joining hands to keep Sadu alive. بداياتي كانت من الطبيعة اللي عشتها أنا شفت الوالدة تشتغل السدو والجدة هون سوان الحي فأنا أخذت منهم الموروث هذا. The ancient style of sadhu weaving is so rare that it was inscribed in UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage List in 2020 as an art form that needs urgent safeguarding. So efforts to empower and support these sadhu weavers have stepped up to protect the art from being lost forever. In a race against time, Caravan Earth Foundation set up a creative residency program with Qatar's Hinat Salma Farm, Joining forces helped widen the search to find as many sadhu weavers as possible. Sadhu is a beautiful textile that can be revitalized and used in our day-to-day -day life. This is why we have a team of people who work with product development, but always sticking to the principles and values of that textile and what it means and what it symbolizes. And it's through weaving these threads of old and new ideas together that the Caravan Earth Foundation hopes will make the art of sadhu last through the test of time. One local tradition that's set to keep flying high is falconry. Many consider the popular pastime a sport that even includes a beauty contest. Adol met a number of falconers determined to pass on the tradition to the next generation. <laughs> Deep in the Katri Desert, hundreds of falconers from across the region gather prized birds in hand. Described as a living human heritage, falconry can be traced back 4,000 years. It's an ancient tradition that's become an annual tradition. Ahmad Sayyid Al Mari has never missed a Mari festival in its 14 year history. And in addition to making sure his falcons stay on course, he's also training his sons to carry on a family tradition that's been passed on for generations. While they have all the same tech gadgets as their peers, Almari encourages the youngsters in his family to go offline as much as possible. And it seems to be working. His 15-year-old nephew, Saeed, has spent a decade learning the tools of the trade. And if the Al Mari family is any indication, the sport will continue to soar in Qatar for years to come. While traditions like falconry and sadhu weaving are kept sacred, Qatar's diverse population creates a vibrant community. The Years of Culture initiative by Qatar Museums aims to bridge and embrace differences between countries. I got to see a special Indonesian performance that celebrated those differences. Backstage at the Katara Opera House, these actors and actresses are getting ready for a big night. The troupe was flown in from different parts of Indonesia to perform Hayati, a musical interpretation of some of the oldest and most treasured Indonesian epics. It's a story about life, tree of life, balance of life. This life, this world is being made by these amazing uh, creatures that, that together and Borobudur is representing of them. The costumes for Hayati were specially put together by one of Indonesia's acclaimed fashion designers, Era Sukamto. Gold head pieces, traditional theatre masks, and colourful, flowy batik. Batik is a profound art. It's not only the way to put the wax and the colouring techniques into a cloth, but it's also a visual communication. So it's a very profound way to presenting all the philosophies, all the wisdoms into one cloth. The curtains come down as Hayati comes to an end. 
but the hope is that the appreciation for Indonesian theatre will linger a little deeper and long after the echoes of the standing ovation. Qatar is clearly committed to strengthening cultural exchanges with other countries, but it also provides platforms and spaces for unique subcultures to find a place in the community. Adol spent some time at Geeken, a biannual gathering of gamers, anime lovers and cosplayers, and a place where it's cool to be nerdy. Last year, Simran Kadam came to Geek End as a fan. This year, she's back to cosplay as Kamisato Ayaka, a Japanese video game character. I wanted people to see a character that they love and like take photos with me and you know, just have something to look back on. I really love entertaining people. Geek End is a safe space to geek out and embrace your inner nerd. Organizers hope it's also a place to be engaged and inspired where visitors can comfortably celebrate all things nerdy without judgment. Here we celebrate pop culture, we celebrate people who love, want to showcase their love for anime, for uh, video games, for board games, uh, and overall talented young people. From Qatar's diverse food scene, to the geeky trends of Gen Z, to the timeless traditions showcasing the country's heritage, we hope you've enjoyed reminiscing some of our favourite moments with us, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.